Hey everybody, Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel where we give you world-class videos on remodeling your homes, your kitchens, and your bathrooms. And we show you how to do all sorts of difficult repairs around your house and tool reviews. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, man, make sure you do that right now before you forget so you don't miss out. And click that little gray bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube will never alert you when we upload videos and you'll miss out. So in today's video, we're doing another one of our Mission Impossible repairs here. So we're standing here at our friend's house here. And what happened was there was a pretty bad leak that occurred under their kitchen cabinet here in the base cabinet and it caused a lot of wood damage so guess what so what we have to do now is we got to remove this whole base cabinet right here and what makes it so difficult is it's so ingrained into the system here you've got this big fragile granite countertop here that you have to be super gentle with and make sure you don't hurt it so as you recall when they install cabinets and granite countertops over the cabinet they usually put a big thick bead of silicone that goes all the way around the perimeter of the top of the cabinet so we're going to have to chisel our way through all of that stuff we have to take out all of the plumbing down there all of the garbage disposal is down there but I think we're going to end up removing this sink and that's going to be another problem too because the sink is siliconed to the bottom of this granite as well so these cabinets they look pretty nice they were installed about 10 years ago uh, but for some reason I guess a lot of water splashing and wear and tear here on this front panel and this is so typical. I hate it when granite people do this. I don't allow this on any of my projects, but see how they got the seam here? And it continues in the back there. And they didn't even put it like in the middle of the, the sink either. So it's just off center. It looks awkward. There was no reason why on this slab of granite here, they could not have done this without a seam. This whole thing, this whole countertop section right here should have been able to be done in one whole section. See, I do kitchens like these all the time. And I always instruct my granite guys to carve me one single piece. There's no reason for this thing to have been done in two pieces here. This is easily a one piece granite countertop right here. Before we begin, you can see what we're doing here is we've put tape over this front part of the granite here just to protect it because we're going to probably start using our manual tool here by hand and see if we can't slice through all of the silicone that's got the granite countertop glued down to the top of the of the cabinet here so you want to make sure in case you slip you don't want to come up and scratch the the surface there and then you're protected if you have to put a tool or part down or something and then we have cloth on the counter here to prevent uh, scrapes so the first thing we want to do now is to remove these doors okay so i'm trying to shine the light in there good enough for you to see if you look way back in there you'll see that kind of uh, dark reddish brown that's the caulk or the silicone, whatever it was they used, the adhesive to, to cement down the granite countertop on top of this base cabinet. So we have to slice through all of that. We have to figure out how we're going to slice through it, whether we use a, a utility knife or maybe one of those drywall hole saws, or we might use an oscillating tool or a sawzall. But either way, we have to be very gentle here to make sure that we do not crack this granite countertop here. Okay, so remember, these are the four screws that we said was going through the cabinet wall and into the next cabinet. So by taking off the doors, we'll also be helping to separate the two cabinets. And it doesn't look like these are long enough to pierce all the way through. So they had the holes drilled, the pilot holes over there, but they never ran the screws. my professional plumber's pan here. We're going to drain out the P-trap so we can remove it. Just let it equalize for a few seconds there before you do the rest of it. He's doing his little Austin Powers. Oh dude, it stinks too. There we go. That says to me we didn't have a slope going back towards the wall. There should be, should be a downward slope. Otherwise the water wouldn't be running back out that pipe like this. Okay, so we separate these now. Now I'm gonna uh, get my hex driver and undo these two. This kit here, it's still a 5 16 It's a 5 16 hex there. So this will work on those nuts. Okay, so 
loosen all three of these here. some water in there that's why it's always good to let it drain into your little pan there see that so this is why folks see there shouldn't be that much water in that hose so this is why when you do your high loop here on the hose the hose is not supposed to come back up at an angle like that a lot of people erroneously do that it's supposed to come straight you know kind of at, at a decline from up top there and if you don't have that decline there then you didn't route the hose properly see then down here for the p-trap arm it's going through this uh, connector here onto the, looks like the old metal waste line there. So we gotta get those two nuts off of there as well. Oh yes. There's a lot of liquid in there still. All right, now you can see I've stuck just a little piece of paper towel in here for a while just to keep the smell from coming through till we can get the appropriate cap put on there because normally we deal with a one and a half inch PVC pipe coming out of the wall for our uh, DWV, that's our drain waste vent type pipe. This one's metal and so it's thin, it's a whole different size. So we'll have to go get a, a cap from it from our little supply bin. Okay, they don't have a jam buster tool or anything here. And I always tell people, you know, the tool that comes with this thing either tape it to it or tape it to the wall or put it up in one of the drawers, but you should always hang on to those things. Nobody ever does. So I'm just going to use the screwdriver. And there she goes. Okay, now we want to make sure there's no power going to that outlet. So we turn off the switch, make sure it's off. And our indicator is telling us there's no power there. Now we're going to loosen all the hoses and get them off. He's off now. Get this other two over here. Now what we want to do is we're going to take our drywall knife here and we're just going to try to stick it in here and see if it can pierce through. And yeah, you can see we were able to pierce through the silicone there. So we're just going to kind of gently tug and pull and it might take us a while, but we want to see if we can cut through it all and go all the way across. Another tool that's helpful here is if you get one of those uh, really rigid type 15-in-1 uh, painters tools here. Uh, it goes really good. Mm -mm. Okay, so now we're going to try the Sawzall. And we're just going to stick the blade in there a little ways. And go, let me come on this side of it here. We're just going to stick the blade in here a little ways and see if it'll cut through. I'm going to go really slow. We don't want to cause any... We don't want to cause any high amounts of vibration that could crack the granite. Okay, so after several minutes of using both of these tools here, along with the Sawzall, we're able to cut cleanly all the way across. See, so I can now put my 15-in-1 tool here, and we can drag it all the way across there, see. We'll hit a few areas where it's still gummed up, but it's, it's cleared, because I can see the light all the way through. So that's how you know you're separated, when you can see all of that light shining through there. See, if you look right along here, you can see all the light shining through right there where my finger's pointing all the way across there. For building codes, the back of your vanity or base cabinet is supposed to be screwed to the wall and there's the screw right. So we have to undo that one as well. So what, the way that works is there is a, usually a, a wood furring strip or a wood stud that's back in there behind the drywall. In this case, there's a cement block wall, so I know it's a, it's a wood furring strip that's back there. And so they just screw it right into that wood furring strip. 
that's required by code because you have to be able to make sure that these cabinets can't move or be pushed or bumped or anything. And there's the view from inside the base cabinet. Now as we look on the sink, you can see all of these brackets here. We have to undo those brackets that are holding the sink to the granite. They're all over a couple there. There's more on this side. Let me get the camera around here and show you. So there's more on this side there. See, they go all the way around. So we just have to undo those brackets. And there'll be some silicone that we'll have to maybe just push down from above and see if we can't break that seal. Now that we've loosened the bracket, we're just going to push down gently on the sink, not hard. We just want to overcome the force of the silicone that was used to glue it into place here. See that? So we got that part down and just gently push the other parts. They may not come as easily, but you just got to gently do it. Don't overdo it because you'll break the granite. the cabinet wouldn't budge so we found behind the foot plate it's a good thing we pulled the foot plate because there's a screw right there see that's what's tying this base cabinet here to the cabinet next to it well sometimes just finding all of the screws that you need to undo can take you an hour so after we were fighting and fighting and it still wasn't going we decided to pull the drawer out here of the unit next to it and sure enough we found one more screw that we need to undo right there because that's what's keeping this cabinet from pulling out. Here we go, we're just loosening this last screw here from the cabinet next door to it. That's what was holding it back this whole time. And here we go. Told you we'd get this puppy out of here, huh? Freedom at last. Who's the man? You can see here we got the cabinet out okay and praise god man we did not ruin the the granite what i was really concerned about is there's a seam right here so now that this seam is going to be hanging we've cut a piece of wood here and we're going to put this wood underneath here and just to shore it up so that it won't sag or anything and so it will have to stay here until we put that the new cabinet in and take its place here but so now i'll put the two water valves back on over here and we'll turn the water back on to carefully scrape up all of this previous silicone that they had here on the floor in front of the cabinet. Everything has to be gone. We have to have a perfectly smooth entry to slide in there with the new cabinet. All right, so here we have the old kitchen base cabinet on the left here, and on the right is the new one. And so all we have to do now is these holes that you see here on the old cabinet we have to transfer them over to the new one. Since this is the exact same cabinet model 
All we did was just go pick up a new one. We're going to just measure the exact spot where these holes were put here, transfer those measurements here, and make the cuts. I wanted to point out something to you here. This is the hole here for the high loop. That's the drain hose from the dishwasher. Now you can see whoever did this hole here, they kind of messed it up. So when they drilled from the back side, which is bad, and so when it popped over here, it just boom. That's what happens when you don't plan your holes properly. So we'll show you here how to cut these holes correctly so that you don't get this type of splintering. So what you're supposed to do is see, this is the good side, this is the visible side. The back side is what we call the, you know, the bad side, the, the non-visible side. What you're supposed to do is take your hole saw and start the hole on the back side and cut in just a little bit, like an eighth of an inch deep, just enough to start it on the back side so you have a clean cut. Then you come back around to the good side and drill all the way through here and pop out on the back side. And since we'd already have a starter hole on this back side here, um, it would be already clean. You won't get any, any kind of splintering on either side. We'll show you that, it's really easy. Okay, so here we've already marked our measurements where the holes are going to be. The outlet will get cut here. The hot and cold water pipes are going here. The waste drain going into the wall will go here and then over here will be the hole for the dishwasher hose. We have this other hole here we gotta do. That's for the hose for the water supply to the dishwasher. Whereas this upper hole here was the hole for the drain hose. Okay, we'll start with that hole up in the corner there for the dishwasher hose and we're just going to run just the drill bit part of this hole dozer right into the center of the hole. So now that we have the hole started, we insert the center of it through the hole, the pilot hole. Then we just start a nice, clean, smooth hole there. We don't go all the way through. All right, that's good right there. So now you can see we have a smooth hole cut and there's no splinters there. So now we're going to come back to the other side and drill through. So there's our drill bit poking through. And there you have it. So then we come back over here, we peel off the tape and you can see you've got a reasonably smooth hole there. Get all the tape off. And that's how you do it. Now you tell me which looks better, this here or this hole over here done by an obviously overqualified professional. So now we're doing the waste, the waste line here. We're going to start our pilot hole right through the center. Okay, so we poke through the other side. Now, now coming through the other side. Okay, so we just did our cutting our groove hole on the, the back side. We didn't poke all the way through. So now we have to come back around to the good side. And there you have it, a nice clean hole. Okay, now we're gonna run our pilot for the two hot and water and the cold water pipes here. We're going with a smaller diameter than what they originally had because I felt that their, their, hole, their hole was too big that they made for half inch pipes. Okay, so now we're going to Try cutting our outlet hole here with our Sonic Crafter multi tool, see if it works. Okay, so here's our two cabinets, and now all of the holes are finished here. And you can see how we just duplicated what holes were here on the old one, transferred the measurements over here to the new one, and now we're ready to install it under the cabinet. Slide it right back in underneath the granite gingerly without destroying the granite. Keeping in mind that we have maybe 
an eighth of an inch space between the top of this and the granite and will shim up from underneath. If you see the mess they made with their holes, especially that one, and then you come over here and you look at this, this is much cleaner, more professional. And we made the holes for the hot and water and cold water pipes here are smaller, which is what they should be because you're dealing with only a half inch copper pipe. Whereas over here, they made it one and a half inch holes which is typically done by guys who aren't very accurate with their measurements, so they make the holes big to give themselves more margin for error. But if you're careful with your measuring, you don't need margin for error because there is no error. Okay, so now as you look at this outlet here for the garbage disposal, I don't like what they did here. This is how we found it. See this black thin gauge stranded wire? I think that's the wrong gauge wire to begin with. Second of all, I don't know what it's doing or why isn't it connected to a ground if there is indeed a ground in there. So we have to pull this outlet out and figure out what's going on. So I, I guess when they were working on this, somebody was unqualified here. And when they installed, and the way they had it installed on the cabinet was wrong. This is a violation of electric code right here. The outlet should not be sticking out beyond the front surface of the wall there. See those two terminal screws there? Those are exposed. At the very least, if you were gonna do something that stupid, you should wrap it with electrical tape first so nobody could ever touch it. So what we're supposed to use here is what you see right here. This is an outlet box extender that goes in there and it brings the outlet out to the surface and yet protects it and shields it, the terminals there. So that's what we're going to install. But we also need to pull the outlet out. We pulled out the outlet and yes, immediately I can see what's wrong here. So when they installed the metal box here, they did it correctly. You can see the builder, whoever installed this metal box, they correctly bonded it to the system ground if you look back at the bottom in the middle of the screen there in the box, you'll see the bare copper ground wire is wrapped around a screw that's attached to the metal box, and that's called bonding the box to system ground, which is required by National Electric Code. But when they put in this outlet, they just left this black wire dangling. So somebody was just completely idiotic, completely unqualified, and this is why I warn you about having people who are not licensed electricians or, or people that really know what they're doing to to do work on your outlets like this so i happen to have i believe with me out of my electrical bag in the trunk a green pigtail grounding wire that we'll use and we'll connect it to that existing screw right there at the bottom of the box and it will run to this black where the black wire is going here to a grounding screw here and that will in turn ground our electrical outlet properly okay so here you can see we just added that green that's a ground pigtail wire there back out a little to show you there so this is a pigtail wire and it comes with a green screw okay so you can see in the back of the outlet box there the green screw is screwed right into the outlet box so there's a hole there that was threaded and our ground screw is meant to go in there. And so we've now added the proper ground wire that was needed for the outlet. So we're gonna just keep these wires bunched together and move the cabinet into place and feed the wires through that hole that we cut in the back of the cabinet. And then we'll attach the outlet on the inside. You can see I've got it properly wired now. We now have a ground wire going to the bonding of the middle box back there too. So if you look here too, I'm one of the few people that actually does this. You can see I wrapped it in electrical tape so now the terminals are protected. Because remember that's a tight little metal box they got back there. So I always try to make sure you don't ever have metal touching metal. But I do this on all of my uh, switches and on all of my outlets. It's just a good practice to wrap them up I think with the electrical tape afterwards. All right, so we got the outlet in place. We have our two dual valves in place now. And if uh, you've seen our video on the alternatives for saddle valves, which I'll put a link to down in the description below for you, you'll see how we install these, why we do this type of dual valve here. But essentially it allows you to add other things. See on the left here, you can see on the hot water dual valve there, there's two connections for hoses. So one will go to the sink the other will go to the dishwashing machine here. And then over here on the right on the cold water, there's two connections. One goes to the, the sink, to the faucet there, and the other one is a quarter inch one. And that one will go to the ice maker line there. So this way you don't have to add a saddle valve. And you know how I feel about saddle valves. You've seen our videos on those and why you should never use them. But this is our preferred method of doing valves under the kitchen sink right here. 
Okay, so now we want to shim up under the granite here because there is still a finite space under here. We have it uh, sealed up with silicone, but you still want to give it some support. So what we're doing is we're snapping off our shims here at the proper thickness. And then we're going to stick it from behind here, right where the seam is. See that opening there? That's where the seam is. So I want to make sure we have one right under there. We stick the shim in from behind and we'll push it in a little further and wedge it in tight. And then once it's in there tight, we'll snap it off on the inside. That way we'll have good support under this granite counter here to keep it from potentially cracking later. And then we'll have one over here and this one over here will go in there as well. Okay, so now we're going to put the sink back on. So you can see we've started to already add the brackets back into place here. Now you can see the outline of where the sink's going to go. It's kind of still right here. So I set the brackets so they're out of the way. And then we're going to bring the sink in from under here or through here. He'll be holding the sink up that way as we tighten these brackets down real quick. It should only take a minute. So we'll put a bead of silicone around the top of the sink first. And you only got a few minutes before it starts to cure up on you. Okay, and there's our silicone bead all the way around the edge. Once we get it on, I'll do another bead between here and the green and all the way around. If you look way up in the back corner there, you can see the screw that we put there as required by code to screw the back of the cabinet onto the wall. There is a stud right behind this, and so we could feel it. We know that the screw grabbed a hold of it. We are well secured into the wall. Okay, things are starting to come together now. I just put the garbage disposal in there on the left, and you can see the hoses coming down from the new kitchen faucet that we're installing. We decided to spruce things up here. Okay, so if you look back here in the corner here, we're getting ready to put the dishwasher back in here. But see how the power cord goes to an outlet? That's a no-no. That's actually not allowed by code. What they're supposed to do is run the cord along the ground, and then it's supposed to come in through the bottom here, and then it's supposed to meet up over with the electrical outlet there where the garbage disposal plugs in there. So this must have been done, you know, years ago. This is probably how they few people did it. I don't even like this plug. They're using a, an extension cord and on top of that you can see it's going to kind of get bent a little when it when we put this back in. We're not going to try to redo this. That's not in the scope of this repair today unfortunately because you'd have to be able to dig into the that's a concrete block wall back there and you'd have to rerun wires to the uh, you probably wouldn't have to rerun it because they would go this way. But it would be just a lot of work inside the wall of redoing the wires to get everything back in here, have it wire in over here on the bottom receptacle of that duplex outlet there. All right, so now we have everything hooked up. Now you can see here, if you remember before, how the, how the drain hose from the dishwasher right here, how it was before, it was coming here and slanting downward and then going back up. So now we, what we did here was we did our high side loop I still don't like the way they did it. I really don't like it when they bring it in through the hole up top there like that. But what we did was we brought it in that hole and we came up to the counter and then it slopes down from the counter. So that's how you get your high loop. Sometimes we'll bring it in from the bottom here and we strap it up the side of the cabinet all the way up to the counter and then bring it back down again and then over to the garbage disposal. But the important thing here is that we're sloping down to the garbage disposal instead of sloping up to it. So that's a mistake a lot of people make, a lot of installers even, professional installers don't understand the plumbing codes that you need that high loop. So a lot of installers will totally blow it because they'll bring the hose in here and go straight up to the garbage disposal, which is just completely not the way to do it. So now we're going to do our water test. Okay, so the first time before you turn on the water, remove the aerator, because there could be sediment trapped in there and uh, in the faucet there from the factory. So you're always supposed to remove the aerator. Just let it run for a few seconds and then you can stop it and put the aerator back on. Okay, so I filled up this basin here with hot water, so we're going to pull the plug on it. That's a good way to test your plumbing there, see how it's doing. So we want to make sure there's, oh, there is some dripping there. Okay, so we fixed the garbage disposal, tightened it down better, now there's no more leak. So what happened was sometimes when you tighten that ring, when you put the garbage disposal back on, if you're a little bit crooked, 
one side of it won't make contact with the gasket. So you really want to make sure that garbage disposal is perfectly straight up and down and level and you look right here to test and make sure that everything's okay there. We don't have any other leaks anywhere else here. We've tested the entire basin there filled with hot water and everything looks good. Now I thought I saw a drop over here too but we'll, we're going to keep checking. So that's what you do is you just keep checking all your spots here. We're going to be replacing all of this anyway. A lot of this is old and I don't like it. I don't like that fitting there, what they did with that. So we're going to be replacing this, but just for now, we're putting it back together just to see how everything looks. But the true test of time comes overnight with your P-trap. So you always want to put like a piece of paper towel on the bottom there and leave it overnight and see whether any water slowly drips out of the trap seal, which is right there. There's a column of water that goes right in there and comes around up to here. So we just want to make sure that that doesn't leak at all. Okay, so now what we want to do here at the sink is we're going to take some silicone and we're going to go around the edge and fill all of these in. Now, even though the sink is all the way up against the bottom of the granite, we still want to make sure that no water can get in here at all whatsoever. See, there's what it looks like underneath. So I want to make sure that no water gets in there. We'll run the silicone all the way around. All right, so I'm using 100% clear silicone here, 100% pure silicone. And just run a quick bead there. I want to make sure we get way down in here really good. So I shove a little more in there. Okay, now I'm going to do this little section here. Now what I like to do is force it up in towards the crack. Okay, what I like to do when I'm doing silicone is I'll fold the, the paper towel up and I always like to keep a wet one like this. See, it's folded up nice and square and straight like this. That way I can take this wet edge and come right up here and clean the silicone off of the area where I don't want it, right? as like instantly as soon as you wipe it. Because after only a few minutes, it starts to cure and you won't be able to wipe it off very easily at all. Okay, now if you look there, you can see where the silicone is there on the, in the middle of the screen. But if you notice in the corner, it looks like we missed a little bit of an opening that didn't quite fill in. So we have to come back and add a little more in there and force it back in there to seal up that crack. <laughs> sinks where I've seen a lot of leaks from different people over the years is right here. People tend to get a lot of water leaking in through here. Even if you have the big plate, even, even if that plate has the plastic gasket, you will still get leaks. And I'll tell you why, because the plastic does not really seal very well up to the counter. So that's why I will always run a bead of silicone around the base here. You have to do that. And then you can see we put these two caps here because we didn't want to install the soap dispenser and there was an old water filter here. Luckily with this, uh, the newer types of these caps here, uh, this came in brushed metal, but what I like about this is it has big threads on the bottom side. It pokes through and it's got the big plastic nut underneath holding it up just like the, the, some of the more modern faucets are. So these can be removed at whim whenever you decide to put something here. We're still going to put silicone around here and around here. Now normally for this I'll buy the little hand tube and just because it makes a much thinner thread. We had this thing opened up wider so but that's okay we'll just put a, a bead going around here. Just the faster you go the smaller the bead it makes so if you can if you can get your gun to go around there pretty fast you'll be fine. So we're gonna have to do a lot of wiping here to get it all off. So I just push my finger right into that corner there, work that silicone right around the edge. Then I come back with a wipe, and I try not to let the wipe touch the base of the faucet, because I want there to be plenty of silicone there. I'll do the same thing with these two guys. Just a quick bead around it. and then try not to get it on the metal itself. You're always going to get a little bit on there, but the important thing is to get all the excess off first and you can come back and wipe it all down. And 
here's the inside of our brand new cabinet. Of course, these are not soft closed doors. These are, this is not the normal cabinets I buy. This is what the homeowner had in here originally. Normally when I buy cabinets, they have soft closed doors that go like this and they go and they gently close. Well, you can see we got it all back together again, huh? And it looks like everything survived nicely here. The operation was a complete success and the patient even survived. And even the granite countertop with this challenging seam right here. Everything survived. Looks like it's brand new again here. I'm sure at the beginning you thought this was probably a pretty scary maneuver. How are we going to pull this off? But you can see everything does pretty well come apart if you're careful and use proper surgical techniques here. Now, taking it out was the hard part. That was about five and a half hours of work. Remember, we had to spend about an hour assembling this cabinet because it came in a box. Then we had to spend about another hour or so measuring and drilling all the holes there. And then we had to go to Home Depot because there was issues wrong with the outlet being wired wrong and we just decided let's replace everything. We went and bought new valves and we went and bought a new faucet. We reattached everything. We siliconed everything and that's how you do it folks. So anyway, if you found this video useful, hey, we would appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up down below here. And if this is your first time here and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure you click on that subscribe button down below and hit the little gray bell icon next to it. That way you'll be notified every time we upload a new video because YouTube will not notify you unless you tell them to notify. And then lastly, make sure you check out these other videos that we have here coming up on the end screen here. The other videos that are useful and related to this that you'll want to see. So that's it for this one, folks. We'll see you all on the next one.